Good evening to you. My name is Shane Scott. I'm a pastor of Trinity Independent Baptist Church, and it is good to be with you tonight. If you will, open your Bibles to Mark in chapter number four, uh, chapter number four and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to help me with this tonight. Dear Lord, as we bow before you to come to the throne of grace, we thank you for the privilege and honor to be able to come to thee and know that you hear us. I pray, Lord, you just have your will and way in the message tonight and speak to the hearts as only you can. I pray, Lord, if there's one out there tonight that uh, doesn't know you, uh, as uh, they listen to the message or whatever, that it may stir them, that it may cause them to come to Christ, but have your will and way in all things. I pray, Lord, for the Christian out there tonight that's listening to the message, I pray that they will be enriched and, and stirred by the message, and that it will be something that is uh, well-pleasing to you. Be God and direct your Lord as we go forward in Christ's name. Amen. In Mark, in chapter number 4, if you will look with me in verse number 35, the Bible says, And in in the same day when the eve was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and, the sea, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? There's a few things tonight that I want to point out to you to try to help uh, to understand some things. That Number one, the fact of the matter is that God does care. The question was asked, do you care that we perish? Well, God does care. You say, well, preacher, how do you know that God cares? Well, number one, we have Christ. God says in his word, he says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, and by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. If we only have Christ in this life, we're like all men most miserable. But we don't. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We have Christ not just in this world, but also in the world to come. Because of that, it reveals to us as believers how much God cares for us. Can you think of that? Can you think about no greater love hath no man than this than a man laid in his life for his friends? Can you think about no greater love than a God that would give his self for us? Can you think about that? That's how great God cares for us. He gave us Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5 and verse number 6, For when we were yet without strength, in due, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can you think of a better reason to reveal how much God cares for us than the fact that he gave us Christ? The Bible says, Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. And ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. I cannot think of a greater reason that God cares for me tonight than the fact that I have Christ in my life. God does care. The question was asked here. He says, look, he says, carest, carest thou not that we perish? Well, God does care. Because he's given us an opportunity not to perish with his son Christ. The second reason I want you to be well aware of tonight, and that is that God is aware of who and what you are. His awareness about you shows how much that God does care for you. In Proverbs chapter 5 and verse number 21, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. Can you think of a God that actually sits and thinks about you? That's how much God cares for you. He ponders your goings. He is sitting there thinking about what you're doing, well aware of what you're doing, and well aware exactly who and what you are. That's how much God cares for you. Proverbs 20, verse number 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? 
In Psalms 40, verse number 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, and heard my cry. Do you not understand that God is well aware of who and what you are, and He's well aware of when you cry? You ask the question, does God care? Well, number one, He gave us Christ, didn't He? Does God care? Number two, He's well aware of who and what you really are. And so because of that, we realize that God does care. In Nahum, chapter number one, verse number seven says, The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. He knows me. He's known me now for 31 years. He knows my good. He knows my bad. And in spite of that, he still loves me. And I thank God for that because it does reveal how much he cares for me. He's well aware who I am, and he's well aware who you are, because he does care. The third reason I want you to understand tonight that God cares for you is that his readiness, and God has a readiness to take and, and jump into action, if you will, to solve your problems. He has a readiness to pardon you. He has a readiness to take care of you. God is ready. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse number 4, For the weapons of our warfare are carnal, or not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all, revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. God's ready to pardon you. God's ready to take action and deliver you. God's ready to do what is necessary and needful in your life. And so because of that, we realize that God does care. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 86 and verse number 5, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. You know what? I can't think of a greater reason, if you will, outside of Christ, that shows how much God cares for me, is the fact that he is ready to forgive me. And I'm here to tell you, I need God's forgiveness. And if you're out there tonight, you do too. Because the Bible says, for all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God. We do need the forgiveness of God. And God shows his care by, number one, Christ. By, number two, his awareness of you. And, number three, the readiness that he has to take and pardon you from all your sin. The Bible says, not only is God ready to forgive, but God is also ready to judge the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 5, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? The quick being those that are alive, and the dead being those that are walking around that are without Christ. God's ready. Don't worry about it. He's ready. And you know what? God cares beyond all measure. I thank God tonight for how much God cares for me. I thank God that he's given me his son. I thank God that he's well aware of who and what I am. I thank God that he's ready to pardon me and to forgive me. But I also thank God for number four, and that is the eternity that God has prepared for me. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse number one, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You tell me what God out there cares as much as my God does. My God gave me Christ. And because I have Christ, now, now because I have Christ, I have an eternity with, with God. And I can rejoice over that fact. You tell me what other God out there. Go down the list. I don't know what your religion is, but go, down the, go, go all the way down the list of whatever religion that you want to, and I promise you, did he give you a Christ? Is he aware of everything about you? Is he ready to pardon you? And is he willing to spend eternity with you when you accept his son? My God is. That's how much my God cares. And by the way, if you go back to the text with me for just a moment, you'll look and see right here as God reveals in his word that not only does he care, but he has the power to back it up. Look at the last of the scriptures right here, verse number 40. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Where's your faith at tonight? Who is it based upon and who is it resting in? The Bible says, They feared exceedingly and said, One to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? That's the kind of authority that my God has. 
Now let's get real about this thing. Let's be honest about this thing. Does God care? Yes, he does. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Well, number one, go back with me to verse number 35 and look at the text. The Bible says in verse number 35, And the same day when the eve was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Does God keep his word? Does God mean what he says? And Titus chapter 1 and verse number 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God gave me a promise. God keeps his promise. God doesn't lie, and so therefore he will fulfill his word. God does care. And the fact that God cares, he gave us his word to back up how much he cares for us. He told them when he got into the ship with them, we're going over to the other side. Then he went into the hind part of the ship, as the Bible says, and went to sleep. Next thing you know, the cares of this life begin to rock their ship. Waves begin to beat upon the ship, even to the point that it began to take on water. They saw things in their life all of a sudden that caused them to be fearful. And they begin to quake. And they begin to shake. They begin to worry and fret. And then they cried out to God and said, God, care us not, care us thou not that we perish. Well, let's go back to the word of God. What did he say to them? We're going over to the other side. You know what God said to me 31 years ago? God said, come, Shane, come unto me, come unto me, and I promise you, you'll go to the other side with me. My God cares, and he gave me his word, and I'm here to tell you, I've had difficult days, I've done things that's not right, and I'm here to tell you, I'm not the best person out there, but my God loves me in spite of that, and my God gave me a word, gave me his word, and his word will take me from this life to the one to come. Yes, my God cares. And if you don't know my God tonight, I would love to introduce you to him. And I'm here to tell you, it is true what his word says. I'm living proof. My God does care. And I'm here to tell you, I care for you tonight too. And I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask God to speak to your heart. And if you don't know the Lord, I would pray that you would find somebody that could show you how much God cares in their life, and that how much God can care in your life too. And we'd like to help you out at Grace Chapel, and we'd invite you to come out and be with us, and we'd like to share the gospel with you and show you how much God can care for you day in and day out. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we bow before you, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this word, and I pray, Lord, you'll speak to these hearts. Show them how much that you care for them. Lord, show them how much that you can be the best friend that they've ever had. Show them how much that you love and what a mighty father that you can be to them. Show them what a Savior that you are. Because, Lord, you care beyond all others. There's nobody that's cared as much as you. Nobody's given as much as you. And because of that, dear Lord, we have a future. We have a home. And heaven is awaiting for us because of your care. Thank you, dear Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, and God bless.